Hello, this is Big Boss Rescue Chief of Humane Emergency Animal Rescue. Welcome to our series, Animal Rescue Postmortem, where we analyze the good, the bad, and the ugly of animal rescues throughout the world. Big Boss again. We're back with uh, Volume 6, Number 21. Here we are again, back to misconduct by police officers, or a police officer violating every safety rule of the firearms basic safety rules once again um, if you haven't seen these other videos before sorry you're gonna hear a repeat my my firearms experience began in 1974 uh, with my father who was in the 101st Airborne Division and he was also a competition shooter so he taught me all the basic fire, firearm rules when you'll see here here in just a minute he taught me all the basic firearms rules and how to safely handle a firearm so I didn't kill myself or, more importantly, somebody else. I'm a certified range safety officer. I've worked professionally on gun ranges and handled all kinds of crazy situations where people were being absolutely unsafe, so much so that they would take a loaded gun, put their finger in the trigger, and then look down the barrel like this. I don't know what they're checking for. <laughs> But I can tell you, I was always expecting a head explosion. And then also, I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment. If you if that's offensive to you or that bothers you, you're free to leave now. We don't really need you over here. And I don't care if, it, if, it, if that bothers you in any way whatsoever. Really, I don't. I'm so much believe in it that I've been carrying a firearm for self-defense since 1982. I have one on my side right this very second. Okay? That's my firearms a brief overview of my firearms experience and then oh, oh just a little bit I've I've been armed backing up police officers on incidents and I've had police officers armed backing me up on my incident whatever they happen to be next I have animal handling experience I've, I've handled very vicious fighting dogs that were trained to kill other dogs you know, the, for the fight the, the, uh, the underground and the illegal dog fighting seen. Alright, so I'm experienced at dealing with those dogs and then other dogs, feral dogs that are out running around in Colorado and New Mexico, um, down here in South Florida, and uh, where even if I'm just working in the shelter, I've had a, a animal control professionals come and get me because they want me to back them up because I just got, like I really got a knack for being able to handle a vicious dog with nothing but a catch pole, okay? Um, so that's a pretty good basic background on, I think, my, um, my experience and why I'm addressing this in animal rescue post-mortem and not actual animal rescues. It's because I think that also, in addition to animal rescue, um, remember, we're always, I'm always trying to gear things towards being safe on the scene, doing things in a safe way, doing things from an educated, skilled mind, not just where you don't know what you're doing. And I feel so strongly about it with these videos, links that people are sending to me. I, I think that these violations of safety must, must be called out. They must have a spotlight shined on them. And it, 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 you know, a lot of people are afraid to critique the police. I'm not. I'm if if you are doing stuff like what we've seen in the in uh, volume number uh, volume six number ten and number fifteen, and then here in twenty one, you you need to be called out. And a, a person that's doing this shouldn't have a firearm, in my opinion. And I'm the big Second Amendment supporter, but some people. Are, are so uh, negligent in their behavior that they shouldn't be allowed to be in a possession of a firearm. It, it's just crazy. You're going to see that in this video. And then uh, in number 10 and number 15, you've already seen it if you've seen those videos. Let's get to this thing here because I'm going on a long rant. All right. The four, the four firearm safety rules that we're going to see here that all people should be taught at least I was taught this I taught it to all the people that I encountered on the gun range uh, pe people who are get inter getting introduced to the firearms everybody should be familiar with at least these four treat all firearms as if they are loaded okay 
That's a simple one. Never let the muzzle point at anything you are not willing to destroy. For those of you who are not familiar, if this is my gun, my little finger gun, this is the barrel of the gun. The muzzle was considered the, the end of the, the barrel here, okay? That's where the, the, the bullets come out, the scary stuff. <laughs> And then uh, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on target and you've made the decision to shoot. So your finger's back here, you bring it up, you get your sights on target, and once you decide that you're going to shoot, then you get your finger onto the trigger and then you take it from there. But not before then. And then be sure of your target what's behind it. And this is where this video proves that to be more critical than any of the other videos we've seen here. And then, be, be, rule number four, be sure of your target and what's behind it. This is another rule that applies to recreational shooting and defense situations. You may have also heard that it's always know your backstop. Your backstop is really uh, good, in good view in this photograph here. You've got your target, and then you've got your backstop. That will be this dirt berm behind uh, here, okay? So we'll go on a little bit, explain a little bit more, and then we'll get right to the video. In self-defense situations, this rule can be more difficult to assess and follow on the fly. That means if things are rapidly evolving on a scene, it can, it can be difficult to assess and follow that rule, but it absolutely must be followed, even at the expense of yourself becoming injured so that you do not and we'll get to that in just a moment it's important to identify your target be sure that you that you want to take the shot and knows what lies behind your target even if you hit your target an over penetrating bullet may hit something you don't intend to shoot always ensure there are no innocent bystanders and or in and or in front of your target behind or in front of your target wait till you see what happens in this video here so, if I'm shooting at something in a self-defense situation, a human or an animal, I need to know if I miss where that round may end up going. And if I shoot the target and it over-penetrates through the target and the bullet keeps flying at the exact, at, 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 deadly, at a deadly velocity enough to kill something, someone, something, animal, whatever, that that where where is that going to end up you must you must know that before you press on that trigger for self defense it is absolutely vital now let's pull this up i'm going to have to repeat this a couple times on here because this there's a big news report and i just want you to see this footage is it down let's leave the volume up for a minute here it's the horrifying moment a rookie cop shoots at a dog and kills a woman. Are you okay? Is that your dog? Can you get get back? Oh my god! Oh my god! Two point three shots. Those were Maggie. Yeah, let it play. Brooks's final words. The mom of three. Those were her final words. Okay, we can see the dog here in the background. I think that I can see this woman's arm here, but I'm not sure if that's her arm or not. But I can see what looks like an arm and maybe blue jeans or a blue colored clothing back here in the background. I don't know if this footage is intentionally low quality because here we've got 1080. And so you would think it would be better quality than this. I'm going to turn the volume down and then we're going to watch this unfold. And I can't because it's YouTube. Wait, wait, I can. Let's go have speed. So here's the dog. Okay. So I'm going to go back here and just for just a moment. This is like a towel or something here. And then I can see now in the center of this, I know I'm going to have to move this pointer out of your way, I can see her head, and then right here, I can see her left arm, okay? So she's leaning up on her right arm.
That police officer just killed that woman by violating every safety rule there is. And I'm going to say, police officer, your life isn't the first priority when you're doing something like this. They killed this woman. I hope that police department pays dearly and that they got take that guy's qualified immunity away and he has to pay out of pocket. Because you, you know this family is going to get a good settlement. And that officer should pay for that himself. At least a huge portion of it. Because this officer is the one who pulled the trigger because he's scared of a dog. So let's watch this dog come at him here. And we don't know, gosh, you know, don't, don't you wish I, I knew what I was doing? So let's go back. We're going to go down to 0.25 on this. And watch this dog approach this officer here. Sorry I can't slow it down any better than that. And Okay, here comes the dog. Now it's running at him. But this, this footage is so crappy. We can't tell whether the dog's being aggressive or not. The thing the officer should have pulled out was a baton. Because the first thing that you should learn when you're dealing with animals like this is distance. Police understand creating distance between them and somebody who's brandishing a knife or other weapon. There's an importance in that. Creating distance between you and the attacker gives you more time to react appropriately. This officer did none of that. They could this officer could have pulled out could have pulled out a baton. Baton will give you a distance between that animal and the animal something to bite. Okay? And police officers, don't come over here with this, well, it's a split-second decision and all of this apologist nonsense. You will be drowned out, blocked by me, and I'll complain against you to YouTube for something. I'll figure something out because I don't want to hear none of this apologist crap. And I don't want to hear the bootlickers come over here. When, If you kill a civilian like this lady back here protecting yourself then you should be willing as the public servant who's supposed to be protecting the the public to take more of a risk on your own life if you're not willing to do that you don't belong in the job because firefighters take a big risk every day they do police officers actually don't take a big risk every day they don't have to, they're not obligated to respond to any calls. The department might require them to, but, 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 but according to the Supreme Court of the United States, they have no obligation to protect anybody. Okay? So, let's, let's, let's watch that again. This officer had time to create distance and violates. Here comes the firearm. If you are moving, if you are moving and, f and, and have a firearm in your hand, there is no possible way for you to accurately hold the gun in a position to fire accurately at this very small moving target that's coming at you. If you're staying stationary and shooting at a moving target, you have a good possibility of hitting that target but if you're on the move and the targets moving I don't care who, what firearm person comes over here and claims that they can do it why don't you demonstrate that for us let me you can post your response to this on YouTube so I can see you actually doing it because I don't want to hear you talk about you doing it all right so don't come over here and claim, claim that kind of crap because remember I've been dealing with firearms since 1974. I've heard every kind of lie that can be made up about a firearm. So, the the let's go back to the basics up here. Treat all guns as if they're loaded. We know it's loaded. That's why it's on his side for self-defense. Never let the muzzle point at anything you're not willing to destroy. Well... That didn't, they didn't, this officer didn't do that. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights, your sights are on target. 
and then you, you make the decision to shoot whether you're going to do it or not. But you have to have sights on target. When you are moving backwards away from a target and not staying stationary and pointing that gun at target and getting and getting and getting on target and it's moving towards you, you have to be if you're stationary, you have to be so good that most people just aren't that good. It's simple as that. Most people are practicing on targets that are stationary. I don't know anybody that's practicing on a target that's moving toward them down on the ground like a dog. If you know of that, uh, tell them to send me a YouTube video or something So, because I want to see it. And then be sure you're targeting what's behind it. He killed the woman. The, oh, well, he, I don't know if it's a male or female officer. I don't really even care. That person killed, the officer killed the person in the video by these acts here. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. So, apologist, shut up. Shut up. I'm not going to hear it. If you comment over here, you're just going to get de uh, deleted and blocked. I'm really tired of watching these videos like this and seeing this is going on. If, if this is happening in your city, you should not be tolerating this. You should not be tolerating this. And I'm surprised, I would be surprised if people aren't lighting up their Facebook page, calling their phone 24 hours a day, making it nearly impossible for them to conduct business on their on their public phones by just continuously complaining about this. I'd be really surprised if that's not going on. But you can bet one thing, that city's going to have to reach a big settlement for that. And that woman's dead. That's unacceptable. There are no circumstances, what we see here in this video, that makes that outcome of that acceptable. I'd rather see this police officer get mauled by the dog than have them shoot somebody that shouldn't be killed. It's This qualified immunity and all this kind of crap that's going on is unacceptable. That needs to be done away with. As soon as police officers start becoming liable for their own actions here, and they do away with the qualified immunity by law, watch what happens. There'll be a big change in how officers respond to these things when they, when they think that they can lose their house, their car, their livelihoods. That might be a big change, and the safety might come around. I didn't, I didn't plan on going political on this, but I'm tired of this kind of nonsense with police officers shooting at dogs that may even put even a tiny bite wound. You're that really that scared of a bite wound? Are you going to get scared of a mosquito bite or bee sting or whatever? I, I just think officers that do this are, are cowardly. They are reckless. And this kind of person has no business being out on the streets where stressful situations happen and they might just start shooting wildly because this is what we're watching. We are watching a police officer shoot wildly at this dog here. I don't believe at any point that this police officer actually had that dog in, its, in his or her sights. I don't see how they could. The dog's moving. The officer's moving. I, I've, I've practiced and tried to do stuff like this, and I'm a pretty good shot, but you, you're moving continuously. It's just, no. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you look sure and through and see. It doesn't even matter. Just send us the link. Put it down in the comment section there with a brief description, and then put your comments down here let us know what you think about this video we want to know what you think about videos like this hey thanks a lot for all your support and all your love and all that cool great energy that you send to us and we can feel it we really do we feel it and appreciate it very much and we hope that like it comes in here and we feel that and then all of a sudden it gets reflected to you back out there like tenfold a hundredfold all right well, that's it for this one. Yeah, I will go all in on police, firefighters, animal rescue people, animal control. It doesn't matter. When, when we have a post-mortem lesson to learn, we will cover it. 
and we'll we, we nobody nobody is immune from the postmortem. All right, I'll see you the next time.